Get ready to build strength, power, and slabs of lean muscle. Welcome to the Super Strength Show, featuring motivating stories of success and no BS straight talk from the greatest in the iron game today. Now, here's your host, Ray Tulaney. What's up, Strength Maniacs, and thanks for tuning in. I'm pleased to welcome today's guest, Corey Probst. Corey directs the Nutrition and Weight Loss Program as the Vice President and Wellness Director at the Diet Doc. Corey has earned a bachelor's degree in exercise physiology, a master of science in counseling, and is currently finishing her doctorate in health psychology and behavioral medicine. Her education is enhanced by certifications, because obviously all the other stuff wasn't enough, in personal training, health coaching, lifestyle and weight management consulting, and she is an International Society of Sports Nutrition clinician. Corey has earned professional status in three divisions of physique competition, including bodybuilding, figure, and fit body within the WNBF. So guys, she's not just a pencil pusher, right? She's been on the stage. She has been a runner-up contender at the WNBF World Championships twice and has earned pro title at the Mid-America Pro-Am and Pro Cup in Sacramento. Corey has a regular column in both Oxygen Women's Fitness and Ultra Fitness magazines. If that wasn't enough, because as I said a second ago, of course it's not. She is also the managing editor of Alpha, the Evolution of Fitness, is an avid blogger, teaches at national camps, and provides international webinars that have changed the lives of men and women alike. To find out more about Corey and her work, visit thedietdoc.com. That's just simply T-H-E-D-I-E-T-D-O-C. Dot com. Corey, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. And Thank you, Ray. Yeah, it's uh, it's good to have you on the show, Corey. And oh my God, I think uh, yeah, we're going to need to bring you on like 10, 20 different times, I think, to kind of get through all of this. This is uh, quite a resume that you got going on here. Well, I, pre- <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. No, and the beautiful thing is that you're not just somebody who is like addicted to learning. You're actually applying this, which I think is fantastic. Uh, and well, that's, that's the fun part for me. Yeah, definitely. Like I love the knowledge, but I want to be able to use it and help to affect change with it. So yeah, yeah, because I've trust me, I know a few people who never really ever got out of university, and it's like, okay, at some point you're going to use this stuff, right? Or you're just going to continue to keep going to school? Like this is kind of getting crazy. Uh, <laughs> so so it's good that you're actually applying it, which is fantastic. And I'm wondering, how about you tell us a little bit more about yourself, Corey? And kind of what set you down this path and uh, just share a little bit more, maybe uh, some of the information that wasn't shared uh, during that intro. Gosh, Ray, that's such a big question. And it is. this is, it's so, it's funny because I'll say like, I, you mentioned that I speak at, at national camps and I attend um, Lane Norton's camps all the time and speak. And the last time I was there was his camp in Florida, his VIP camp. And he gave me 40 minutes and I emailed him and I was like, dude, (laughs) 40, really? You know that I can talk forever. Get Adam to zero to that. He's like, okay, I'll give you 10 more. (laughs) But how, wow. How did I get started with this? Yeah. Okay. Um, How about this? How about this one? Because we got to be respectful of time. And yes. because I don't want to send you down this, you know, this kind of free for all path, uh, <laughs> I'll give you a little bit of a path to follow instead, some structure. Sure. Here. Okay. Obviously, you have a passion for what you are learning and what you're doing. How about you tell us what fuels that passion? Curiosity. Mm-hmm. You know what happened to the cat, right? I do. And <laughs> we're all going to die. So <laughs> why not during the time we're alive, really? take a deep dive into why we do the things we do and how we can become more actualized people and Mm -hmm. get curious about what makes us tick and what makes us tick is globally and in a very connected way. I am fueled by learning about human behavior and human relationship really. And so my work obviously has gone down that path as a, you know, as a therapist and as a coach and as a consultant, creating that connection with the people I work with and helping them to create more robust connections within their own lives has been key to my happiness and helping others to, I guess, I think really solidify their sense of potential and place in the world too. 
Yeah, I love that. The whole idea of self-actualization and not just attaining a high level of skill maybe or development in one area, but just expressing all facets of yourself and your personality. Yes, we all have so many different parts. And I think where most people struggle is when they shut down a lot of those parts that they may deem as unacceptable or ugly. You know, we could get into a whole discussion about emotion because that's kind of where my area of expertise is in teaching people about emotional agility and how to be accepting of all emotions that they experience because it's 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 energy and it's information and, and we need to pay attention to it and use it. But yeah, that's kind of that's the guiding kind of my guiding light in everything that I do. Okay. Two quick points. First of all, I think I found a new hashtag, which is get curious. Uh, yes. That's an interesting one. And yes. uh, the other one is just briefly, what is emotional agility? I've never heard that term before. Very interesting. <laughs> and, and she's laughing. Doesn't that sound fun? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's being flexible in accepting and understanding and getting curious about what we experience emotionally. Mm -hmm. So developing a robust sense of intelligence around who we are and what we feel and why we feel it and what the people around us feel and, and how we have an impact on other people's emotions and what that means. So agility is, to me, when I say those two, emotional agility to me is a dance. And you no know, emotion resides in our bodies and produces specific sensations that we can become very adept at attuning to and not necessarily being afraid of when we talk about emotion i think a lot of people cringe mm -hmm. no i don't want to feel that there's this pervasive avoidance of emotion in our society, I think. So when I teach emotional agility, it's to have a level of compassion and acceptance and openness and flexibility towards all of our feelings and emotions and experiences and using our curiosity to understand what they're telling us. Yeah. And I, I believe somebody who is not in touch with their emotions, you know, some guys you know, may scoff at this concept, tends to be sometimes the way that uh, society set up where women mm -hmm. are extremely over emotional and men aren't emotional enough, which I think that's obviously just a massive generalization, but there's some truth in that. Uh, that some being, so socialization that has occurred that has prompted us to respond that way. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Now, in my opinion though, I think that's setting you up to be somewhat brittle, right? Fragile. And, you know, mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, some people may be thinking, Ray, what the heck are we doing here? Talking about emotions and stuff. We're getting all sappy, guys. <laughs> but, but, you know, but what the emotions heck? are at the core, Ray, of emotions everything. Are at the core of motivation, of goal yep. pursuit, of our determination, everything we do. So, yeah, I mean, let's get real here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you take, look, etymology is a beautiful thing. If you take the word and you trace it back to its root, you have emotion, right? And uh, the concept is like upward, outward type of motion. Energy and motion. Yeah, is how we get yeah emotion. exactly. And emotion is what you know gets us up and moving and gets us going. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. it's crucial. It's very important, especially when it comes to not just being emotionally stable, which is very important. You know how people talk about having strength in times of uh, difficulty and whatnot. Well, yes. uh, you know, well, well, you're going to have some difficulties going after your goals. It doesn't necessarily mean that the world has to be falling apart around you. But mm -hmm. also in that situation, that is a type of strength and it's a level of maturity that comes from understanding yourself and your emotions. And I guess by the sounds of it, this new term I just learned today, emotional agility, I guess, having a, an appropriate level of it. Yes. All very, very resilience. interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Resilience. Exactly. Yeah. The, you know, they, they say the strongest sh uh, shall survive, but hmm. I believe the proper term is, you know, the species that is the most adaptable survives. I agree with you. Right. And I yes. think that is actually what it should, you know, that is actually what it is. It's not just the strongest, you know, the, the one that can, I don't know, has the biggest teeth and claws or can pick up the you know heaviest, I don't know, logs and trees and, and rock. That's not what it is, actually. It's the most adaptable ultimately survives, right? So probably was that way a long time ago. <laughs> but 
now that we have brains and prefrontal cortices, that's the that game has changed a little. Bit. Well, it, well, it changed quite a while back. I mean, we can go back quite a few million years, and I mean, there used to be yep. this thing called the dinosaurs, and they didn't have much in the way of brains, and they were the biggest and largest and strongest. And look what happened, you know, unfortunately to them and other creatures that were able to adapt. And I think that you know holds true even with us, right? And again, it comes back, mm-hmm. I think, to resiliency. Mm -hmm. So, you know, are you somebody who needs everything to be perfect to be able to stick to your workout nutrition plan? And if you ever go outside of that or deviate from the plan, you fall apart, i.e. you go away or you travel somewhere. If that's the case, then you're not, you know, trouble a little bit. Yeah, you're in trouble. I mean, that's kind of a weakness in a way to a certain degree. So I think it comes down to, again, if you look at any of those sorts of circumstances that are are difficult that you could classify as adversity or hardship. If you approach it with curiosity, the world opens up a little bit. Oh yeah. Yeah. Big time. I like that. Yeah. It's kind of like an adventure, right? Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay, Corey, let's get this thing kicked off here with the the first main question of the show, which is sharing one of your favorite success quotes, an example of how you've applied to your training in your life. I would say, and this is a quote by William James is the father of psychology. Success or failure depends more upon attitude than upon capacity. And to me, this is at the crux of how I have really structured my life. And I can't say that early on it was deliberate at all, but as I've matured and learned more and gone through some difficult circumstances in my life that I have realized just how crucial it is to position my attention. And I like to call this because this is something that I teach my clients is attitudinal positioning, Mm -hmm. that how I position my attitude and my attention is a reflection of what I'm experiencing internally, but also conveys and sets me up for the trajectory that I am, I'm going to follow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big time. It's kind of like Ford, right? When he said, you know, for the man who thinks he can or the man who thinks he can't, you know, both are right. Mm-hmm. Kind of the same idea. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we all have the ability to change our attitudes. That is something amidst a world that is supremely uncertain. Change is the one thing we can count on. Our attitude is we can control it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And it's interesting because, you know, we constantly touch on the power of the mind uh, during this, you know, during these shows. Mm -hmm. I mean, without fail, you know, at some point in time during an interview, you could trace back success, you know, comes back to your mindset, attitude, as Mm -hmm. you were saying right now. And that is one of the things that is completely under control. Like you said, it's kind of like work ethic, Right. Okay, you may not have the natural, you know, talents or God-given abilities that others may have, but in terms of work ethic and how hard you work, that's something that's completely under your control. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, some may argue, well, others may have more stamina than you. Ah, whatever. Anyway, you can increase that, right? But and mm-hmm. then your attitude is another thing that you can control. And it's funny because these things that tend to be under your control usually tend to be the most important or most decisive factors when it comes to achieving your success or ultimate goals. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's. Let's jump into the next one, Lori, which is sharing a story of a time in your training when you had a breakthrough moment. If you could take us back and tell us the steps that you took to turn that light bulb moment into success. I feel like I have these mini breakthroughs every single day. And mm-hmm. and maybe this is my sort of vulnerability in that none of them would really mean much to anyone, but they're super significant for my <laughs> own life. And I love to reflect. Mm-hmm. I have to reflect to feel (laughs) like I'm moving and that my life is fluid and that I'm moving toward something. Mm -hmm. I mean, just today I was, I was training and I was doing leg extensions and I had the thought, what am I training for? And to me, that was kind of an important question. Oh yeah, for sure. And then I had to go to, well, what am, am I, tr- what am I training for right now? And what about this rep right now? Maybe that's all I need to be thinking about. Just this rep on the leg extension machine, just this rep. But then what am I training for long term? And then I thought about the Spartan beast that I'm running in three days. <laughs> and so I, I guess, I don't know 
Ray, that my sometimes my most poignant moments are not earth shattering, ground breaking, like aha moments, but they hit me between the eyes and they make me think and respond in a different way moving forward. Yeah, does to, that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. To me, it almost sounds like just being open to receiving the ideas or being willing to reflect and sensitive to these kind of, I guess, breakthroughs, these mini breakthroughs. And to me, I think all of us could potentially have kind of what you're experiencing, especially if you are doing a lot of things, right? These daily kind of breakthroughs. Yes. And if you're open yes. to receiving them, you're getting much more feedback to kind of course correct and continuously move forward towards your goal, maybe at even a quicker pace or at a better pace than you would have if you didn't pay attention to these things. Well, I think you're right. And I think it comes down to also the more present you are and the more you're aware and the more curious you are, you find that so many different things within your life connect. Like you said, I'm involved in just a ton of different projects and in, in my work, in my personal development. And, you know, one thing in the gym, and I've used this in lectures before, coming back to emotion, but this sense of avoidance that people carry around with them, you know, pain in the gym is often, it's welcome. We desire it. We crave it. If we're in the gym and we're just kind of going through the motions and we're not experiencing some level of discomfort, we almost leave the workout disappointed. Yeah. But when you, you look at that in the context of life, pain is something that, oh my gosh, like you hear the word and you cringe and you tighten up and you get very tense and it's something that we want to get away from or run from. And if we can make the connection between the two and realize that, you know, in one instance, we're moving toward it, we actually desire it, we want it. What if we approached life in the same way, where we expect it, it's going to happen. And if we took a more uh, like approach orient orientation towards pain, what would happen? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's I mean, th the learning yeah. is if you're just doing the same old, same old, it's very unlikely you're going to learn. Therefore, you need to step out of the everyday routine, which means you're going to be outside of your comfort zone, which by definition is going to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And that's ultimately where you're probably going to have these breakthroughs, mini or large, you know, or, or, or not. It's, yeah, we have to have novelty in our lives, that sense of newness, of unknownness to start being creative and make those different connections, like I mentioned. Yes, that novelty is key. Mm -hmm. So if we, we keep, like you said, doing the same things, and if we keep expecting that things are going to happen a certain way, we are really, really limiting ourselves and our, our capacities and our abilities and our creativity. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. Because you're not giving yourself an opportunity to discover and express more of whatever latent abilities you have or to develop more skills or, or mm -hmm. the abilities you currently have at a higher level. So mm -hmm. yeah, I would agree with you on that completely. It takes a bit of courage, but I think once people understand that, they start to kind of look for those opportunities. They start going. Yeah. You know, I mentioned this, I was um, just on our, our license, our owner training call. And this comes from Ellen Langer, who's a social psychologist, and she's really done a ton of research on mindfulness. The difference between asking yourself, can I, and how can I? Yeah. And this just, this just struck me when I read her book, Counterclockwise, just how poignant that is. When you ask yourself, can I, you're limited to two answers. Yeah. You can or you can't. <laughs> <laughs> When you ask yourself, how can I? The assumption is that you will. And now you just carve the path. Yeah, exactly. Now it's a matter of just, you know, letting the creative juices flow and, you know, start coming up with ideas of how you could achieve it. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of the idea of what would you take on if you knew you could never fail? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And unfortunately, it sounds kind of hokey for some people to think like that, but but the reality is it's it's a really, it's a shame that we think more along the lines of can I or can't I, really, because that's just shutting us down so much. So we're not using that creative ability, which 
you know, I think that's what we are. I think we are creative creatures. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's the wrong or not, not as good of a question because it doesn't tap into our very nature, which is our creativity. When you simply ask, can I or can't I? Yep. And it, it minimizes the possibilities. Yeah. Because you're not tapping into all of your innate skills, you know, mm-hmm. and tools and whatnot that you have. So. You know. And that's, I mean, that's a whole nother discussion, Ray. Like I said, we could go in so many offshoots, but <laughs> those skills and capacities and abilities, you know, not only do we build them, we scaffold them, mm-hmm. but a lot of people don't recognize the ones that they already possess. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. They, they, and the ones that they possess, they may potentially recognize, but maybe they don't realize how far they could actually take them in all the different ways in which they could yes. use them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And to do that, you need to get out of the routine, right? And put mm-hmm. yourself in situations where, yeah, you 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 are forced to use them at a higher level or in a different. Manner. Okay, Corey, let's get into this next question, which is real simple. Could you recommend one training resource for for our listeners that would benefit them in their training? Obviously, here, and it could be anything from a book, an app, a program, a piece of equipment. What's something that you could recommend that you felt has really helped you? This is where the reflection comes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just said to the people I was training today, don't be afraid to pause. Uh (laughs) Let's see. Because I love psychology and I teach mindset and and determination, Mm -hmm. I am going to have to say, I'm going to give you two books. Okay. One of them is called Mindset, Mm -hmm. and it's by Carol Dweck. She's a psychologist at Stanford. It was pretty revolutionary for me when I first read it because the concepts can be applied in any situation and are universal to everyone. They connect very well with what has become something I'm incredibly passionate about, which are the basic psychological needs of self-determination theory. Mm -hmm. And you ask me about my training. And while I love being in the gym and training my body, I wouldn't love it so much if I weren't able to throw my mental and emotional energy into the goals that I have there. Right. Yeah. So mindset has really been key. And I apply that in every situation and sometimes better than others. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fallible just like everyone else and can find myself unfocused and angry and not necessarily being too emotionally agile in some situations. <laughs> um, but that was. That's a a great book I would recommend. And then, you know, I work, Ray, with a lot of individuals who struggle with disordered eating. Mm -hmm. And disordered, that word, I think, scares a lot of people, uh, but people who really struggle with eating behavior and particularly in like high level sports and intense training sorts of situations when we believe we really need to control, it's a pretty rampant condition that I am sorry occurs, but really requires um, a lot of compassion and openness and courage to deal with. And one of the best books, because I struggled earlier in my life with uh, disordered eating, one of the best books that I would recommend is called Eating in the Light of the Moon. Wow, interesting. Okay. What a title. Yeah. And it comes back to what we discussed a, a bit ago in, at the beginning of the interview, which was that we have, there are many facets to who we are and parts. We'll call them parts. Light parts and dark parts and gray parts and all different colored parts mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that we decide at some point in our lives based on the circumstances or the people in them and that we need to protect and lock up and close the door on and not face and not pay attention to. And, you know, the rooms that we shut down don't go away. 
they're still there because they're they're us. And so this book really was formative in terms of my coming to terms with the dark parts of myself that I had locked away for a long time, but that were asking to be seen and asking to be heard. And without, I was not fully whole and authentic and able to really reach down and grasp my full potential in this world. Yeah, I think that's something I'd love to have you come back and actually expound on. I think there's a lot of people who would benefit from hearing that story. Absolutely. I would love to. Okay. So those two books, we will definitely have links to them on the show notes page to make sure you guys can get access to them. Now, Corey, next question is one we'd like to have some fun with. We get a little silly. So we're going to go from something that was a little (laughs) bit more serious to uh, have a little bit of fun here. And you're in the gym, you're doing your thing, you're doing your training. I walk in at your whiff of something. You're like, geez, man, Ray might be emotionally agile, but that guy, <laughs> but that, I really got to be emotional agile. I, I really got to be really emotional agile here because that funk coming off this guy is just brutal. And I'm, I'm at this point, Corey, trust me. I mean, I've, I've handed the keys off so many times to DeLorean. I've, I've been, I just gotten used to it, right? I think I'm going to start just wearing car fresheners around my neck. But anyway, I give you the keys and I, and I just point. I don't even say that. I just point out the window. I mean, obviously, I'm not getting digits at this point. Any chance of that, I've completely went out the window. You look down, you see the DeLorean, the one and only. It's got a fresh, full tank of hot garbage ready to go. So now you know where the stink's coming. Nice. So uh, if you were to take that and go back in time, knowing what you now know, how would you structure your training to get the best results in the shortest period of time and set you up for long-term success? Now, given your background, this isn't, you know, we don't necessarily have to focus on, you know, exercises per se. If mm-hmm. you want to uh, delve into some of the psychological and emotional aspects of it, I, I mean, we're open to any of that. So mm-hmm. what would you do to uh, achieve those? You know, the first thing that came to mind was I had this image when I was 14 in intro to weight training. <laughs> that was my first kind of foray into training. I had the choice to take physics as a freshman in high school or intro to weight training. And I chose weight training. And (laughs) that was, that was pretty monumental time in my life. I had just moved to a new town. I knew no one when I started my freshman year. So pretty insecure. And gosh, that I was strong. (laughs) I was stronger than all the boys at 14 years of age. And I earned the nickname guns by all the boys. <laughs> yeah. And, and for those who don't know, who haven't seen you. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we'll have some photos of you um, <laughs> on, on the site. Trust me. I mean, she's not, you know, I mean, you're, you're not lining up for the heavyweight, you know, powerlifting championship. <laughs> no, no, but, not I mean, at all. <laughs> you know, Mighty Mouse may have kind of been a better moniker for you, but, uh, <laughs> you know. Keep in mind, I was 14. and On so, top of that. You know, okay. Girls mature faster than the boys do. Oh, is that what, okay? All right, we'll call it that then. Well, yeah. <laughs> Look, I'll tell you what. Very quickly, in school, elementary, junior high, even high school, there was a girl that was in school with me, uh, Laura. I'll leave it at that. And we used to have like wrestling class, wrestling. Like we would actually wrestle in gym class, and to keep it oh. safe and fair, everybody be like on their knees, like kind of you know wrestling away, right? And Laura would kick like ninety nine percent of the guys. <laughs> Asses. And they would be so embarrassed. But I mean, they, she really would whoop their asses. It was unreal. So anyway, yes. it, it's okay. It happens, right? It happens. Yeah. So I was lifting more than the boys and it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I gained a lot of self-esteem from that class. I, like I said, when I was younger, I I wasn't focused on approaching life with curiosity. That wasn't a deliberate thing. I just kind of did stuff. But at the same time, I was really cautious. Girl, I was a cautious young person, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really cautious just from how I grew up and what I watched my mom endure as a single parent. And I was really protective of her and protective of us as a family. And so, gosh, where would I take the DeLorean? <laughs> yeah, where is this DeLorean going, by the way? I don't know where the DeLorean The DeLorean is, I don't need the freaking DeLorean. <laughs> <laughs> 
So struck. Lillian okay. can keep its trash, and <laughs> I don't. So okay. So what is the advice you'd give to somebody then who is starting off? What would you recommend to them? To kind of again, help them get the greatest results in the shortest period of time, but again, set them up for long term success. What talk you- to people. I would say talk to people. Get gather information. And don't necessarily information about ant farming. Talk to the librarian. Like, who are we talking to here? What information are we gathering? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's a valid answer, question. Yes, okay. Like, it, learn from people who you think could, who you have an expectation could teach you nothing. Mm-hmm. You are going to be surprised. Take opportunities to learn from other people. Yeah, I mean, what that brings up in my mind right away is. Yeah. A lot of guys will go to competitions and then they're all focused on the winner and they never think, mm-hmm. maybe I should go talk to the guy in second or girl in mm-hmm. second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. I mean, mm-hmm. who knows what they had to go through to get to where, where they're at. Maybe the guy that won or the girl that won first is just so naturally talented. They really didn't have to put much effort in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's Yeah, absolutely. That That is true. I'm sure probably many times. I think, you know, we're natural storytellers, Ray, as human beings. It's how we make meaning of our lives. And I'll tell you, I texted my mom last night. This relates to the question. I said, mom, if there was one thing that, you know, you could share with the world or share with me about what you might have done differently when you were younger what would it be? I don't have an answer from her yet. Interesting. You're, you're asking me a very similar question and I don't have an answer because to me it's, you know, that's the past. (laughs) Like (laughs) it's, it's the past and I can only move forward, but I can move forward with this sense of openness and an approach orientation and curiosity and a love of learning and a belief that everyone who crosses my path could potentially teach me something if I'm present enough to listen. That's good advice. I mean, it sounds, you know, you're probably thinking in your mind, what, did that really answer the question? I don't know. I kind of hear that in your <laughs> that voice right now. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I could hear it. Okay. Uh, but I forgot to mention you that. You hear the I, gears turning. Yeah, I got another podcast where I actually tell, you know, read people's uh, futures and stuff like that, right? But no, I mean, the only real shortcut in life is finding a mentor. In other words, learning from somebody who's been there, done that, and can take others like you, in your situation to, you know, whatever that promised land is that you're trying to uh, get to. And talking to people is one way to go about you know, learning from them. So, yeah, you know, I think, I think nowadays you know, computers and whatnot and the computers are great. Cause look, we're doing this right now and it's all going to be online and all these things. It's all fantastic. Mm-hmm. I think we're kind of lacking in the uh, actual person to like face to face kind of communication, sitting down and really listening to somebody, learning from somebody. I think it's great reading articles and books, but as the Chinese saying says, the proverb is something along the lines of a conversation across a table from a wise person or wise man is the equivalent of a month's reading of books. Mm. Right. So uh, I think that kind of touches upon what you were saying. We lose the sense of connection and collectiveness when we can't look into that person's face and see those you know, muscles move and the crinkle of the eyes and the upturned smile and hear the tone of voice. There's so much lost when all we're focused on are words on a page. And like you said during commercial, the words on a page these days are in bulleted format because we're unwilling to take the time to read a, you know, a longer, more reflective piece. We just want the sound bites. So, yeah, I don't know what more I have to say about that, except sometimes we need to take the time and not always be in a rush to just get through things. Yeah. And yeah. that I will say was how I lived a lot of my years earlier in my life. Which was pushing, which, pushing, pushing, rushing. crossing yeah. things off the to do list. Go, go, go. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And as opposed to um, really getting the most from each experience or each goal, whatever it is that you're working on at the moment, as you said before, getting being very present. Mm-hmm. And it's not something you can do all the time. No, you no. know, you have to constantly come back to it. Oh, that I'm doing it again. Okay, let regroup here. <laughs> it's a practice. 
it is a deliberate practice. For sure. Yeah. And again, that developing that mindfulness, that, that ability to be present, working on that, it is a skill, as you said, and the more you work on that, you'll be surprised at how much more you'll get out of everything in life. Even the mundane things, even though we said it's important to kind of step outside of the daily routine, but even during the daily routine, you'll be surprised. You'll start picking up on things. It's like, wow, this has always been here. I never really paid attention to it before. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, okay. All right, Corey, I know we got to keep an eye on the clock. Uh, You got to get going. You are a very, very busy person. So uh, (laughs) I want to be respectful of that. And uh, so we're pretty much at the end here. Uh, on behalf of myself and the audience, I want to thank you for coming on and sharing, uh, you know, some of your story with us. And we definitely need to bring you back on because one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on is the fact that your background is just incredible. Again, the between the education that you have and also the the things you've accomplished in the real world, right? If you want to call it that. Thank so, you. And I think you're an amazing role model for men and women. Okay, in many different ways. You know, being as you know, just as educated as you are, I think that's amazing. Being as dedicated as you are to your training, women, just take a look at Corey and you'll be surprised when you realize how hard she trains and not to make you blush, Corey, but I mean, she still looks very much, you know, like a woman, very feminine. And uh, mm. I think that's something else because a lot of women, and this is something in of itself, it could be, you know, an interview. Mm, a lot of women, they think, you, yeah, you're welcome. And I mean, look, it's true. And to me, it's important that people get to see real examples of role models, right? Uh, not to take anything away from some of the people that are out there right now, but a lot of people that are out there that are role models, and I've I've mentioned this before to some other guests we've had on, they tend to be just somebody who's just naturally, you know, has a good figure and they're kind of giving advice. They don't really know what they're talking about. And Mm -hmm. there's Mm -hmm. some of that that's going on with women, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, To know that somebody like you, that not only is going to school, you're running a dissertation, you're trying to get your PhD. So, I mean, you're really going to school. Like this isn't a joke. You are very busy businesswoman. And you're still getting your training in. I mean, being able to do all that. No, people, it's not a walk in the park, but it is doable. Uh, (laughs) You know what I mean? It is doable. It may not be for the faint of heart, but it is doable. And that in of itself is, I think, a motivation for a lot of us. I mean, there's so much more that we could do with ourselves and our lives. We just got to be willing to get out there and find something that's passionate for us and have that, you know, as we said, that emotion to fuel that that kind of that drive, that desire to get you going and and make things happen. That's where goals start. Yeah. And I mean, there's an emotional spark. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. And I think it's important to kind of detach from a lot of the business we got going on in life and kind of tap into what is it that's important to us. And, mm-hmm. you know, something will come up and go after it. It may not be the thing that you're going to do for the rest of your life, mm-hmm. but uh, trust me, in all likelihood, it'll probably help you determine whatever it is, as long as you get out there and start actually making something happen and go after it. So again, you know, you had mentioned uh, the eating disorders. I mean, there are so many different ways that we can go in on this, your behavioral uh background with uh, just the mind, the mindset, changing people's behavior. That in of itself is, an, is another episode. I mean, you got to promise us you got to come back on. Okay. Cause I mean, like, I like I said, a couple dozen times to talk about all these things. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'd really appreciate that. So, okay. With wrapping up, Corey, where can we find out more about you and it, just some parting words of advice and uh, we'll end it off for today. Sure. You mentioned the website, Ray, but I'll repeat it. It's www.thedietdoc dot com. People can follow us on YouTube. Our address is the diet doc weight loss. My email, if anyone wants to reach out to me, I would love to hear from you. It's Corey spelled K-O-R-I at the diet doc.com. Joe and I have, it's, we co-authored a book. It's called 50 mm-hmm. Days to Your Best Life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this really focuses on a very comprehensive and sustainable approach to permanent weight loss. It includes an entire training program. A Half of the book is mindset section, recipes, meal plans, and a step-by-step guide to setting your macros and understanding different concepts like thermogenesis and the concepts that really guide you towards a place of sustainability. So I guess the one other thing that I, I want to mention, Ray, if it's okay, is just that we have a licensing opportunity. So for individuals who are business-minded, forward-thinking, and interested in starting a permanent weight loss and nutrition consulting practice and business, we license our system. So Dr. Joe and I 
mentor our owners from a a business and a clinician and client development perspective. And so if if anyone is interested, um, love I would love to chat with them too about that opportunity. Yeah. And the beautiful thing is, yeah, the beautiful thing is that if you were to take that opportunity, you were tapping into a system that is, I mean, this is not just something that was made up on the fly. This is a very proven system. Um, as we've you know touched upon, uh, Corey has been... <laughs> <laughs> She's got enough certificates and degrees and, you know, to make an alphabet soup and then some to last year for the next couple of months. And she's not the only one, right? I mean, the team that's there is just incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So that's something you get to tap into. And that is just such a big benefit, right? It's like, uh, you know, you could start up your own restaurant or maybe you could have one that's been around for 50 years or something like that that has proven systems and methods that you can follow. And this is kind of the same concept. So definitely something to look into. And if it's something that interests you and you agree with what's going on there, uh, you may want to actually try that out. So that's, uh, that actually sounds very interesting, kind of get up and running right from the get-go as opposed to yeah. kind of stumbling around to figure it all out. And it's not just the training and nutrition advice and the behavioral change and all of that. There's also the business advice as well, right? Yes, absolutely. Thank you for adding that, Ray. It's yeah. quite comprehensive. There's certainly a team aspect. I mean, we have 75 locations across the U.S. at this point and overseas. And yeah. We are involved with our owners on every on every level uh, from multiple capacities, and that sense of team and camaraderie um, and collaboration is really what makes it fun for our owners in in getting involved and really building lucrative businesses and helping people. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, that's that's kind of like probably the uh, the cherry on top, right? So. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, parting advice, what do you got for us, Corey? Be open, accept all parts of yourself. Don't take no for an answer. Listen to those voices because there are many of them <laughs> in your own head. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You, especially <laughs> yeah. when you start paying attention there. It, Absolutely. It's, sounds funny, but there's a lot of stuff going on in the background. There's there. a lot of stuff going on up there and some of it is meaningless and doesn't need to be listened to. A lot of it deserves your attention and can teach you a ton about who you are and what's important to you and what may be your next best step. Taking that opportunity to tune into yourself and in a very non-judgmental way can set you up for, I think, the best success in any endeavor and for life especially. Yeah, I agree. Those voices going on up there, the, there's con- many times conflicting like rules almost, mm-hmm. right? And uh, yes. that is just setting you up for self-sabotage. It's like dragging a weight or an anchor behind you as you're trying to you know, go towards whatever it is that you want to have in life. And the quicker you can kind of get that stuff sorted out, the much more fulfilling of a life you can have. And it doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, okay, now you have to set these crazy goals that you got to go after. Some people are not really interested in that. But whatever whatever it is that you want to have in life, when you sort out what's going on upstairs, you know, between the ears and the gray matter, uh, it just makes whatever it is that you're doing that much more pleasurable because you are much more on point. It's It's almost like playing a game like a sport you've never played before and you have no idea what the rules are and you're just confused and you don't know which direction to go into, what to do mm-hmm. versus playing something that you are extremely familiar with. You know, all the rules, you know, the field, the court, everything. And mm-hmm. uh, it's like a home court advantage and it just becomes so much easier and enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and- yeah. You know, I am the Spartan beast. This is the 13 mile 30 obstacle <laughs> race that I'm doing on Saturday. <laughs> and what you said is so spot on because many of the obstacles I know I'm going to, I'm going to run up to them and I'm going to be like, Hmm, <laughs> I've never seen this before. <laughs> yeah. What do I do? <laughs> I'll wait for other people to try to climb up it and pile up and then I'll just run on top of them and hop over. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So if we can approach life that way, I mean, think of how far we can go. I'm I'm unstoppable. <laughs> yeah, and, that, and that's kind of the idea, though, of those races. I mean, some people can have it as just a fun time to get all muddy and you know run around with friends and have a good laugh and a good time. 
But the reality is you can take more away from it than that. Just like you're training yes. and it could teach you lessons that you could apply outside of the gym, yes. right? That you could benefit in spades in other areas mm-hmm. of your life. Mm-hmm. So a bit of an advertisement for uh, that race there. Where's that being held at? It's in Temecula, California. Temecula. There you go. Yeah. That, that sounds interesting. I've never heard of that one yet. Temecula. You no, know, last year they they canceled it halfway through because it was so hot. It got up to 114 degrees. Oh my God. <laughs> so um, I've checked the weather forecast and it's only supposed to be 95. So it only. should be okay. <laughs> only. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Hopefully people aren't boiling too bad. Uh, hopefully everything goes okay. <laughs> All right. So it sounds like you got some fun for yourself. Thanks again, Corey, for coming on. Please. I'd love to have you come on again. I know you got this dissertation. You got to finish up in the next few weeks. So best of luck with that. Thank Uh, you. Hashtag get curious people. And uh, get out there, man. Be open for life, man. Be open to learning and expressing yourself. And we got one go at this, as you said (laughs) early on in the the beginning. I mean, death, (laughs) right? You never know when it's going to come, man. Get out there and and enjoy your life. Live Mm -hmm. it, man. Live it with purpose and with passion. I sound like a Tony Robbins commercial right now. You do. It's perfect. Exactly. Now I got to start like beating on my chest and stuff. And uh, <laughs> My teeth aren't quite as big as his or my head, but yeah, he's, yeah. No offense, Tony. I love that guy. Is Corey, thank you so much for everything. And don't forget guys, she said she's willing to answer some of your questions. If you email her, you heard what this lady's been through. This woman's, I mean, accomplished beyond accomplishments, you know, whether it's under the bar or, you know, knows, you know, in between the covers of a book, right? And uh, she's kind of earned her way in more ways than one uh, in multiple fields. And having that opportunity, you'd be crazy not to take advantage of it. So don't abuse it, you know, by trying to ask her 10 million questions, you know, each. (laughs) By any means, trust me, she's busy. She's got to get off this call. So I got to end this. Okay. (laughs) All right. I got to go. Okay, guys. As always, you're welcome, Corey. As always, put this stuff to use. And until the next time, train smart, train hard, and we'll talk to you then.